Good evening, I'm Jim McLean, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Da Vinci Science Center. And I'm Lynn Erickson, CEO and Executive Director of the Science Center. Jim and I are thrilled to welcome you, your friends and your families, here this evening to celebrate the achievements of this year's Hall of Fame honorees, students and educators who are passionate about STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. The Hall of Fame Awards celebration has been part of the Da Vinci Science Center tradition since 1999. This year's event may look different than those in the past, but it still truly exemplifies the organization's mission to bring science to life and lives to science. I'm looking forward to hearing from our award winners and our keynote speaker, Captain Irving. Tonight's theme is Soaring to New Heights something that all our award winners have achieved and will continue to do so. Thank you, Jim, for joining me this evening and for all that you do for the Da Vinci Science Center. With your leadership and the full support of the Board of Trustees, the Science Center is soaring to new heights. Thank you to all of you who are watching from your living rooms, your patios, or wherever you are for joining us tonight and for helping us honor the scientists inventors and engineers of this generation and inspire their successors. This is an exciting time for us and we are extremely grateful to our sponsors and to supporters like you. We hope that you extend your generosity by joining this evening's pledge appeal. All dollars raised will go to support the Lenny Fowler STEAM Scholarship Fund, formerly known as the Lenny Fowler Science Inquiry Fund a fund established to provide access to individuals and schools to participate in hands-on science learning. You can learn more about the fund and make a donation by visiting our website. I would like to extend a special thanks to our presenting sponsor, Highmark. Highmark has been a longtime supporter of the Da Vinci Science Center, recognizing that a healthy community is one where families have access to opportunities that spark curiosity and inspire learning. I'd like to welcome Mindy Beck, a Science Center trustee and director of client management, Eastern Region at Highmark Blue Shield, to say a few words about Highmark and its support of the Science Center and STEAM. Thank you, Lynn. Good evening. Again, my name is Mindy Beck, director of client management with Highmark Blue Shield. Highmark Blue Shield is pleased once again this year to be the presenting sponsor of the Hall of Fame 2021 awards at the Da Vinci Science Center. Tonight, students and educators from around the region will be recognized for the great work they are doing for STEAM development. We look forward to learning more about them during the presentation and hearing how each one of them are leaders in their field. Highmark is proud to support this event and the ongoing work of the Da Vinci Science Center. We believe that engaging active communities encourage better health and wellness, and part of that includes embracing innovation and science to build what might be lacking in the community. The young leaders and pioneering educators you'll meet here tonight are key to building stronger and healthier communities for us all. Congratulations to all the award winners. Now, I'd like to turn things over to my fellow trustee and our program MC, Megan Deller. Megan has had an interesting path which led her to her current role today at MAC. Megan called herself a social butterfly when she was in both middle school and high school. She was smart, but not all that focused. She joined the Navy JROTC and found the structure she needed in a team first environment. She then joined the military, the US Air Force to be more specific and she went on to become an aircraft egress system specialist or the person responsible for the last life-saving feature within the military aircraft for both the pilot and co-pilot. Pretty impressive to say the least. Unfortunately, Megan eventually got injured and she was no longer deployable. As such, she decided to separate and use her GI Bill to get her master's degree. Megan then went on to earn an MBA and post baccalaureate certificate in supply chain, ops and logistics management. And she had the opportunity to be part of an international graduate program with Volvo 
international business experiences. She worked at North America headquarter for three years when she then had the opportunity to move to Mack Trucks factory. She jumped on the opportunity for new experiences. In her current role as business team leader, Mack Trucks Production, she is currently one of three female managers in the plant. She is the chair of their networking group, and one of her goals is to get women in trucking, society of women engineers, and other female focused groups in front of her colleagues. Megan certainly has taken her career to new heights, and she is still a bit of a social butterfly. I'm proud to turn the rest of the evening's festivities over to her. Thank you. Thank you, Mindy. It's an honor to be here to celebrate these amazing individuals. I have a unique experience with STEM education. So coming out of high school, I wasn't really totally sure what I wanted to do, and I ended up in the military. And I was working as an egress technician, which meant that I worked on ejection seats, and I got to play with a whole lot of smaller explosive components. Really important to understand electrical actuation, mechanical actuation, grounding principles, things I had never really heard of before. And it was what I needed to use in order to keep myself and the person next to me safe. So now, as a quality professional at Mack Trucks, I run a team of engineers that effectively do the same thing. Anytime we have an issue with the way that we're putting a truck together, we need to make sure that the solution that we find is high quality, so that not only are we keeping the person next to us and the operator safe, but also the person who's gonna be driving that truck later on. We wanna make sure that we're not stressing components. We wanna make sure that pneumatics and electronics are working together the way that they're supposed to. And all of it is intended to keep each other safe and make our projects more successful. None of that would have been possible without awesome STEM educators that I was exposed to when I was younger. We will begin by announcing our educator awards. Behind every successful student is a dedicated and inspiring teacher. Before I announce the award winners, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors for supporting our Educator Awards. Thank you to Corbenic Partners, Just Born, Vince and Michelle Sorgi, Michael J. Stout Jr., and Stout Associates. Thanks to all of you for supporting those who are guiding the next generation of innovators, creators, and community builders. Each of our Educator Award winners will receive a certificate for a free STEM education program for their classroom. Our first award is the Educator Excellence Award, given to outstanding STEAM educators whose teaching includes in-depth student engagement, cross-curricular integration, and real-world applications and connections. This year's award winners are Cynthia Dale Miller of William Tennant High School in Central Bucks School District, and Stacy Chunko of March Elementary in Easton School District. Let's hear from both of them now. It is a great honor to be receiving the 2021 Da Vinci Science Center Hall of Fame Educator Excellence Award. I am extremely grateful for this recognition. I first learned of the Da Vinci Science Center when I was looking for something fun and exciting to do with my family. I remember our first visit to the center nearly a decade ago and the absolute awe and joy that lit up the eyes of my children as they explored the engaging exhibits. Over the years, my family's returned many times and each time I am delighted to see my own love for the sciences reflected in the faces of my children. In the same way that Da Vinci Science Center sparks wonder and natural curiosity in its visitors, I strive to replicate that experience in the classroom each day as an educator. I've had the pleasure of teaching a wide variety of high school science classes for the past 18 years. In that time, there's been a tremendous shift in the amount of technology readily available to our students. As a result, students now have a wealth of knowledge at their fingertips. I see my role in the classroom as someone whose primary focus is to expose students to experiences and opportunities that cannot be found with a quick Google search. In recent years, I've had the opportunity to teach forensic science, a subject that is prevalent in TV, movies, and podcasts. In partnership with the world-renowned Center for Forensic Science Research and Education, Students are exposed to authentic learning opportunities. Student explorations include entomological studies in post-mortem interval by gathering maggots from decaying body animal carcasses at our very own body farm. Mink autopsies, forensic anthropological identification of unknown specimens, and several full-scale mock crime scenes immerse students in the forensic experience. Those students who are further interested in studying forensics are given the opportunity to meet with and interview professionals. 
Through both the Forensic Career Expo and the Science Speaker Series, students are encouraged to make connections outside of the classroom with forensic chemists, biologists, toxicologists, and law enforcement. As a woman in science and as an educator, I feel it is my responsibility to promote the sciences to those populations which have been historically underrepresented in the field. In 2016, I established William Tennant High School's Women in Science and Engineering Club to foster and guide young women interested in STEM careers. The members of WISE Club have toured Fox Chase Cancer Research Center, meeting with scientists, toured local programs at universities to meet with both undergraduate and graduate students to discuss their experiences, and attended a wide range of conferences, including the Da Vinci Science Center's 2021 WISE Network event held in March. I am proud to be the recipient of an award from an institution which values the role of women in science and engineering as much as I do. I would like to thank the Da Vinci Science Center and the members of the Selection Committee for recognizing science educators and selecting me for the 2021 Da Vinci Science Center Hall of Fame Educator Excellence Award, as well as Vince and Michelle Sorgi, the sponsors of this award. Thank you to Dr. Julie Heinrich, Dr. Dennis Best, and the rest of the administration at Centennial School District and William Tennant High School, as well as my colleagues for their support and guidance throughout my teaching career. Special thank you to the members of the scientific community which have been willing to collaborate with me for the benefit of my students. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not thank my parents and my loving support system at home comprised of my husband, Jeff, and my three children, Kaylin, Ryan, and Caroline. I appreciate your unwavering support in all that I do. Thank you. I am overwhelmed with gratitude to have been selected to receive the Da Vinci Science Center Hall of Fame Educator Excellence Award. I'm so honored to have my work recognized in this way by the Da Vinci Science Center. It means so much to me that the work I am so passionate about also resonates with others. I have always loved science and the excitement of discovering new things. Scientific discoveries impact our everyday lives. Science keeps us healthy, gives us the ability to communicate, powers our houses, and makes our lives easier in many ways. I absolutely love teaching science to my fourth graders. The excitement, discovery, and wonder that resonates from them with each lesson is contagious. I love that science lessons can be taught in the kitchen, the backyard, the classroom, in the car, from anywhere. There is always a connection to science in everything we do. I wholeheartedly believe that STEM is extremely important because it teaches critical thinking skills and instills a passion for innovation. It teaches our children more than science and mathematics concepts. Its focus on hands-on learning with real-world applications helps develop a variety of skills they will need to be successful in today's challenging world. With every lesson I teach and every topic we explore, my main objective is to have my students be able to make real-life connections to what they are learning. My hope is that the skills will help them guide them down the path to their career choice. This accomplishment is not something that I did alone, and there are many others who deserve to share in this award. I would like to thank the fabulous staff at F.A. March Elementary who continue to inspire me each day, as well as my amazing students and their parents who supported and financed all of our science projects this year as my class of students learned remotely from home. And a special thank you to Mrs. Tomit for recognizing my hard work and dedication and nominating for me for this award. Last but not least, thank you to Michael J. Stout of Stout Associates for continuing to support public education and the students of Pennsylvania. I hope that this recognition of my work can serve as an inspiration to others in the field of education. I will continue my efforts to incorporate STEAM-based learning in my classroom so all my future students will develop the love of learning and wonder. I am humbled and appreciative. Thank you. Congratulations again to both Cynthia and Stacy. Our second educator award is the STEAM Leadership Award. This is given to educators who have demonstrated leadership in their district to improve STEAM education. This year's winners are a team, Denise Root and Matthew Irway, who collaborate in their work at Butler Middle School in the Wellsboro Area School District. Let's hear it for them. Hi. I'm Denise Rao. I'm a business and computer teacher. And I'm Matt Irway. We are both teachers in the Wellsboro Area School District. A few short years ago, we were put in charge of the enrichment and gifted program in our school. 
and we had quite a variety of students and it was really fun to see the energy they had and really uh, what really stood out to both of us was the way that they had a huge interest in STEM. They wanted to learn about science, technology, and engineering and that. Well, I knew we needed some guidance to make this program successful for our students. So I enrolled in Bloomsburg University's STEM boot camp for one summer. And that was where I was introduced to the Da Vinci Science Center for that program. I was energized and motivated by the inquiry-based learning that I was uncovering. I shared this learning method with Matt and we knew we wanted our students to use this inquiry-based method to be able to explore all of their ideas and then present everything they discovered or created in the form of a STEM spectacular assembly. We started off with each student spending a little bit of time doing some research. We wanted them to have an opportunity to do some exploring and find things that really were important to them. Having students the center of education is important and we want them to have an active role. Once they were done with the research, we then gave them an opportunity to discuss. Between each other, they were able to put together some ideas and come up with some projects they thought would be pretty neat. We had crazy ideas. They were such a fun group. We had, uh, believe it or not, hovercrafts that they designed using leaf blowers, plywood. We even had one group of students that wanted to toilet paper the entire audience using Bernoulli's principal and a leaf blower and some paintball. We had air guns that they crafted from trash cans that would target and knock solo cups off audience members' heads. We had speaker systems that were made from paper plates and other household items. We even had entire swimming pools full of food blocks that teachers got stuck in because of course they hesitated. And the students knew that the matter wouldn't change if they walked without hesitation. So they were able to walk across while it remained solid in their walk. As the students in the school became more and more involved, we actually put together a second activity, which was a fall spectacular we did with the students, where we did some pumpkin jumping. It was a ton of fun. We brought in fellow teachers as well, Heather Ladd, for art ideas. Math and science core teachers were consulted. We had ELA teachers involved, helping the students come up with obituaries and poems for their catapulted pumpkins. The students continued to want more. So Matt sat down and we brainstormed and he came up with this great idea to do a boat regatta and make it a competition in our town pool for the entire school. So this event featured actually a parade, customized flags that were designed and sewn in our FCS classes, posters made in our class, and every other content area was included and incorporated yet again. As we continued to plan this all out, we wanted to make sure that the ideas were getting bigger and better as we went. And really the energy from the students was what was able to, to drive this. We stumbled upon a really nice activity called the What's So Cool video competition, where the students got to go visit local uh, community members, community businesses, and really check and see how they use STEM in their everyday operation. It was a very, very uh, cool activity that we were able to do and great opportunity. So the pandemic might have slowed us down a little bit with our momentum this year. But if science teaches us nothing, it teaches us to adapt and come up with new and interesting ways to explore all of our problems, including this one. I guess the main thing we hope the students get from our STEM program is to embrace their own ideas, not be afraid to be tomorrow's creators instead of just the consumers of products and technology in all forms. We don't want anything to hold them back. We want them to go into each and every idea they have with an open mind, looking forward to any problems they might encounter as they're just opportunities in disguise. We'd really like to thank the Da Vinci Science Center for honoring and being co-award winners of the Da Vinci Science Center Hall of Fame STEM Leadership Award. We'd also like to thank Kimberly Bullitt, Director of Education, Prep and Training Programs from Bloomsburg University for nominating us. Of course, we'd like to thank our school district Dr. Brenda Freeman, Superintendent, Mr. Rob Kreger, our Principal, Ben Miller, our Assistant Principal, our Board of Directors, and all of the faculty and staff of Rock Hill Butler Middle School. Without all of your support and help, this award wouldn't have been possible for us. We'd like to thank all of our students here at The Rock, past, present, and future, along with their parents. The energy they bring every day is amazing, and we thoroughly enjoy each and every day. We'd like to thank our own parents. Okay? <laughs> My parents were both educators, and they brought us up just to dream big and go all out whenever possible. Even when that exploration involved 
taking a bite out of every single tomato that came out of my parents' garden to make sure that the acidity level was the same for all of them. Sorry, mom and dad. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention in our better halves, uh, Jen and Rick, for putting up with our long hours, crazy ideas, and all the fun assemblies and activities <laughs> that we do with the kids. Last but not least, we'd let, certainly like to thank our sponsors, Just Born, for the of sponsorship, and for Bennick Partners with mine. We are very, very grateful and thankful for this opportunity and your sponsorship. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Denise and Matthew, and to all our Educator Award winners. The work that teachers do has taken on greater significance this past year. Not only have you all risen to the ongoing changes and challenges the pandemic presented, you went above and beyond for your students. It's amazing work. And now on to our Student Excellence Awards. Once again, I want to acknowledge the sponsors who supported the Student Scholarship Program, which exists thanks in great part to you. Thank you to ATAS International, B. Braun Medical, Fusun Bubernak of ET&T, the PPL Corporation, and Victaulic. We had a very competitive pool of applicants from Eastern PA and Western New Jersey. And in addition to joining a long list of notable winners, each of these honorees will receive a $2,000 scholarship. Not only do these high school students have a passion for science, they shared clear examples of what science means to them in a written essay and during interviews with the selection committee. The recipients of the 2021 Student Excellence Awards are Lucy Clayton from Blair Academy, Purva Gupta from Parkland High School, Addison Liu from Unionville High School. Also from Parkland, we have Ankitha Manjanatha, and finally, Angelina Zhu from Ridge High School. Congratulations. It's almost time to hear from each of you. But before we do that, I want to remind everyone watching that their financial support will ensure that the Da Vinci Science Center can continue to provide access to hands-on science learning for students and schools that don't have the resources to pay for these types of programs. Support for the Linny Fowler STEAM Scholarship Fund provides funding for students to attend summer camp or after-school programs and schools to bring Da Vinci educators into their classrooms. And now it's time to hear from our award winners. Settle in and prepare to be wowed. Science has always been my passion. From second grade when we made slime out of glue in my first ever science class, to the first time I stepped into my research lab, science has pushed me to know more about the world I live in. For me, the key to understanding all that there is lies in science and I take great pleasure and happiness in discovering those unexplored areas. And I don't want to sit idle with the knowledge I have and will gain in my exploration of different scientific fields. I have lived my whole life witnessing the changes that science and technology has caused in everyday life, from iPhones to computers and even vaccines. And as I've grown up, I've realized I want to be at the forefront of that change, working to make my world a better place. When I reached this epiphany back in my sophomore year of high school, I didn't want to wait any longer to dive into possible solutions. Immediately, I began working on a research project to create photovoltaic concrete. My aim in that project was to, just to, to provide an extremely prevalent source of green energy, since concrete is everywhere, to combat CO2 emissions associated with fossil fuels, essentially something to combat climate change, which I believe is the biggest issue humanity is facing at the time. As I move into college, I would like to continue researching possible long-term solutions to climate change. I believe that any problem has a scientific solution, we just haven't developed the method yet. I can feel progress in the air when I hear my fellow lab mates discuss their future research, and I feel change within my own goals of making the world a better place. As I come to the end of my speech, I would like to thank the Da Vinci Science Center and Fusun Bubernak. I am honored to be chosen for this incredible award. The Da Vinci Science Science Center Hall of Fame Award will go to continuing my science education as I move into college so I can pursue my goal of using science to improve our world and learning as much as I can along the way. Hello everyone. I really can't put into words how honored I am to receive this award. Looking back, I never really imagined that I'd start to accomplish things I'd once dreamt of. Throughout middle and high school, my expeditions unraveling the enigma that is STEM have mostly been exploring medical devices, identifying invasive species, reptiles, and amphibians, and understanding how phenomena around me works. I've looked at fridges and have thought about the heat pump inside, wondering how thermodynamics could literally be at the heart of it all. 
I've looked at devices like Google Home and wondered how exactly did the binary working machine evolve so much so that it's become our go-to Q&A device. Above my musings, I've come to the realization that everyone working with STEM shares a commonality, it being curiosity. For our fellow programmers, it's curiosity about front logic. For our biologists, it's curiosity about the origins of life. And for me, it's the curiosity about the fundamental workings of things around me, a mission I think is very similar to first grade me who authored Purvis' trip to space. In all seriousness, right now I'm completing training to be an EMT, a very important lesson we've been taught that I'll never be able to forget because it's applicable to almost everything is to never get tunnel vision. It's extremely important to question everything and anything around me because sometimes identifying the questions we may not have answers to is equally, if not more important than the answer itself. Between my plunges in life sciences, physics, and with helping lead a human rights advocacy chapter, I've learned how to nurture my curiosity and to continue questioning. Beyond my curiosity and the compassion and decision-making abilities I've built through my involvement in each of these communities, they've imbued a deeply rooted sense of giving back to diverse surroundings and helped shape my convictions to help others through every avenue possible, a mission I'll persistently pursue in my collegiate careers, be it innovating for clinicians, volunteering with EMS services, or assisting individuals in my community. My interactions infuse themselves into my perspective, taking me one step further than I used to be with every conversation, motivating me to define my dreams. This financial support will help me spend my time doing everything I care about and more, and help me dedicate my time serving my community. I'm sincerely grateful that the Da Vinci Science Center has honored me with this award, as well as ATAS International for sponsoring it. Thank you. It is hard to exactly pinpoint where my scientific journey began because there has never been a time in my life in which STEM was not playing a role in who I was or what I did. Personally, I found my passion after I took AP Physics 1 during my freshman year of high school. Never before could I apply laws and principles to any and every scenario and derive equations for physical and imaginary circumstances. There was torque in rolling a bowling ball, kinematics in dropping a book, and electricity in rubbing a balloon, and I became extremely intrigued into the field. That year, I took the initiative to perform a computational and theoretical study on the Hofstadter butterfly, a distinct fractal pattern in quantum physics with Dr. Kunal Das of Kutztown University. I grew to love the complexity and challenges of conducting scientific research, and from my sophomore year onwards, I started performing further research by programming numerical simulations in MATLAB for the finite difference time domain and transfer matrix method with Dr. Nelson Tansu of Lehigh University. By contributing my unique perspectives into these areas, I developed my goal of studying physics and engineering in my future. I would undoubtedly love to pursue a career that involves the use of computational and theoretical physics principles to solve problems in engineering, as I believe this interdisciplinary study can have extensive real-world implications. With the Da Vinci Science Center Hall of Fame Award, I have the support to continue pursuing my scientific goals with the hope of receiving a PhD one day, and I cannot wait to continue my journey. I would like to thank my high school teachers, especially my AP Physics lead teacher, Mr. Sean Flusso, my AP Lang teacher and debate coach, Mrs. Jennifer Smith, and my guidance counselor, Mrs. Jennifer Tabarani at Parkland High School, who have been my biggest supporters, as well as my science research mentors, Dr. Nelson Tansu and Dr. Kunal Das, who were kind enough to allow an eager high school student to conduct research with them. I would also like to thank the sponsors of this award, B. Braun. Thank you, and I congratulate my fellow Da Vinci Science Center Hall of Fame awardees. I want to start today by thanking the Da Vinci Science Center for this opportunity, and especially the committee for taking the time to recognize students making strides in STEM. My journey in STEM started with my love for origami. The paper cranes and dragons I folded as a child sparked my interest in origami engineering, a field inspired by the transformative principles of paper folding. Twelve years ago, I never could have imagined folding more than tiny little birds. But today, my passion for origami engineering has ultimately led me to the Sun Robotics Lab at the University of Pennsylvania, where I have researched and engineered origami-inspired self-folding robots for the past four years. There, tinkering with laser cutters and programming complex simulations, I bridge origami and robotics, art and STEM, the whimsical and the experimental. My experiences at the Sun Robotics Lab opened the doors of scientific research to me. In summer 2019, I worked at Stony Brook University through the Garcia Summer Research Program, studying polymer nanocomposites applied to 3D printing. 
Last summer, I was named a Research Science Institute Scholar, one of 80 high school student researchers recognized internationally. These transformative experiences have reinforced my desire to be a part of the next generation of robotics innovators, one that advances the field to better cooperate with humanity. I plan to take all that I have learned with me to Harvard University next year, where I plan to major in engineering and continue my research in robotics. After college, I intend to pursue a doctoral degree, directing my research towards the goal of innovating in adaptive engineering. Beyond academia, I know that my future career will integrate robotics, whether that be using the Da Vinci system to stitch skin grafts or engineering flexible bodies to strengthen spacecrafts. I wouldn't be here today without the amazing support system that I have. Thank you to my family and friends who never gave up on me. Thank you, Dr. Cynthia Sung, for taking a chance on a little freshman who loved origami and engineering. And thank you, Mrs. Maggie Hunt, who has truly been there for me every step of the way. Finally, thank you, PPL, for sponsoring the scholarships. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Angelina Shoup and my future goals include promoting accessibility in medicine. It started a couple years ago. Volunteering at Children's Specialized Hospital, I saw a young infant patient begin choking on her trach tube. I sprinted her to the doctor who cleared her airway and saved her. But even during this life and death emergency, the child's parents were nowhere to be found because parents were away working to pay off the extraordinary medical bills. I wanted to do more for these children and the fields of medicine in general. So I founded an organization called Miracle Network to raise money and awareness for pediatric illness. In spite of the pandemic, we've raised 10K for pediatric illness and held hours of virtual support sessions for patient families. Science began to play a huge role because at Children's Specialized Hospital, I realized that so many diseases are still untreatable. I wanted to research these diseases to discover cures and innovations that increase treatment efficiency and decrease medical costs. The events from Children's Specialized Hospital were ingrained in my memory and pushed me to take risks and embrace learning. My first research internship at Rutgers had a profound impact on me. I studied genetics and biotechnology, and for the first time, I saw my tech talks knowledge used in real life applications. Afterwards, I began doing research at Alzheimer's disease and machine learning. Even though they were different fields, the true beauty of science lies in the transferability of skills and knowledge. The Da Vinci Science Center Hall of Fame Award would support my education to study biology and public health so I can pay it forward in multiples through a national platform in research and medicine. I want a national platform to impact more people. The importance of this leadership role has been more evident than ever during the pandemic. The Da Vinci Science Center Hall of Fame Award would allow me to spend more time volunteering in public health sectors with a greater focus on learning and research and also ease the long journey towards a medical and PhD degree. So thank you Da Vinci Science Center and our sponsor, Vic Dalek, for making this possible. Thank you and have a good day. Congratulations again to everyone. Speaking of being impressed, it's now my honor to introduce tonight's keynote speaker, Captain Barrington Irving. When I was in the military, I never really considered myself doing anything groundbreaking, but I realized I was the only female in every shop that I worked in at every base that I went to. And I started to feel like I was part of a real community that was bringing additional diversity into these STEM areas. As such, I'm a little bit starstruck today to introduce Captain Irving, who is a renowned pilot, educator, explorer, and a community leader. Born in Kingston, Jamaica, Captain Irving moved to the United States with his family in 1989, where he was raised in Miami, Florida. He first became interested in STEM programs while attending Miami-Dade County Public Schools. His passion was aviation. A Guinness Book record holder from 2007 to 2012, he was the youngest person to fly solo around the world. He also holds the record as the first African-American to ever fly solo around the world. 
Captain Irving is the founder of Experience Aviation, a nonprofit designed to help middle and high school students explore aviation and other STEM-based careers and programs through hands-on learning experiences. He then established the Flying Classroom, a STEM-related digital curriculum for K through eighth grade that allows students to learn about Captain Irving's expeditions and design innovative solutions to STEM field and worldwide issues. In fact, Da Vinci Science Center and the Allentown School District are hosting the Flying Classroom this spring. We have the pleasure and privilege to host Captain Irving thanks to the generous support of Bob and Sandy Lovett. Bob was the founding chair of the Science Center and now serves as Emeritus Trustee. He and his wife Sandy have been generous supporters for over two decades. It's my honor to introduce Captain Barrington Irving. At the age of 19, he learned to fly and forever touched the sky. At 21, he launched nonprofit Experience Aviation. At 23, he became by far the youngest person to fly around the world solo. At 24, he challenged 60 students to build an airplane and piloted its test flight. At 26, he received the NASA Trailblazer Award. At 28, he was one of 15 adventurers selected as a National Geographic Emerging Explorer. At 30, he launched Flying Classroom. He is a mentor, educator, humanitarian, and inspirational pilot. He is Captain Barrington Irving. Hi everyone, it's Captain Barrington Irving. To be quite honest, I do whatever I choose in life because of STEM Plus. And you can do the same and even more. I'd like to first congratulate the Educator and Student Award winners and express my gratitude to the Da Vinci Science Center and its benefactors for supporting STEM education and the sciences. It is my honor to recognize the teachers who are unsung heroes, who showed up in person via Zoom or taught hybrid lessons during a time of great uncertainty. Thank you for creating inspiration when others needed hope. Thank you for engaging students. And most of all, thank you for empowering students during a time of fear. A teacher changed my life as well. Her name is Miss Batiste. Ms. Batiste taught social studies, and I honestly couldn't stand this woman. I thought she gave too much classwork and homework, but what I did not realize is that Ms. Batiste saw more potential in me than I saw in myself. At the time, I played high school football for a team that was ranked number one in the entire country, and my dream was to play in the NFL. My life changed when I first met a United Airlines pilot I had a chance meeting with an airline pilot who I saw stepping out of a white Lincoln Navigator, dressed in a professional uniform, had no clue what exactly this gentleman did. But he saw that I was staring at him and he walked over to me and he asked me one pivotal question. He said, hey son, have you ever thought about becoming a pilot? My first words to him, I said, sir, I don't think I'm smart enough to fly an airplane. But I asked him one pivotal question. I said, how much money do you make? <laughs> Although I took interest in aviation, it wasn't until Ms. Batiste pushed me to turn down football to pursue a career in aviation. Honestly, it was the greatest decision I ever made in my life. Thanks to a teacher I didn't really like that much. You may be wondering, why I say it's the greatest decision, but I want you to understand, I played football with guys on my team who made it to the NFL. Thanks to STEM Plus, I've made more money than all of those guys combined. That's the power of an amazing teacher who sees potential in any student. Thank you to the Da Vinci Science Center for allowing thousands of students to soar to new heights as they followed our flying classroom expeditions in Iceland and Shanghai, China. These things that you're learning in school, uh, STEM plus and a number of different subjects, that's what's going to get you there. You have to use it as tools in order to get to where you wanna be. Also to all the adults in the room, yes, the rumors are true. 
I am afraid of heights. I know it doesn't make sense, but I understand the stem of flying airplanes. Standing off the edge of a tall building, on the other hand, just isn't for me. Having the opportunity to conduct a treacherous dive in Iceland and touch two continents at the same time was absolutely awesome to share the concept of tectonic plates with your students. Look at how swollen my face is after diving into 36 degree Fahrenheit water. It's just living what you read in a book. Absolutely amazing, only at the flying classroom. My face is absolutely numb, but what an amazing experience. That is the power of STEM Plus, allowing you to explore whatever you want in life. I've done over 63 expeditions with an amazing team of people from all around the world. Can you imagine swimming with jellyfish? Helping people see again with the Flying Eye Hospital? Conducting surgery on a 300 pound tiger? And many more worthwhile things to explore in the world of STEM Plus. I started off with three holes in the bottom of my shoes and for two and a half years, people told me there is no way I'd be able to fly around the world solo. To all the students, keep chasing your dream. To all the educators, keep allowing students to dream. At Flying Classroom, we believe learning should always be an experience. Although the journey is important, students care the most about the destination. Congratulations to Da Vinci Science Center, Mr. and Mrs. Bob Lovett for having me here this evening and the students families, educators, and community members from Eastern Pennsylvania and Western New Jersey. Can't wait to see how you soar to new heights. There is so much more to explore with you all. Blue skies. Thank you, Captain Irving, for those words of inspiration and for all you do to help students soar to new heights. Before we say goodbye, and speaking of soaring to new heights, I'm going to turn the program over to Lynn Erickson and a few of her friends who will share plans for the new Da Vinci Science Center in downtown Allentown. I promise you don't want to miss this. My name is Celizandra Marin. I'm 14 years old and I am in eighth grade. What I want to be when I'm older is a web designer, a web programmer, any sort of programmer, technology, computers, all of it. And then coming here, that just made my passion stronger. My interest is just shot through the roof. I'm Gilbert, and I'm from Rod Middle School. The careers I'm looking at is a chef and mechanic. I think the science test will help me learn about more science and in my career paths because I didn't realize that chef and mechanics need science to do what they do and I think it's gonna help me a lot. When I was asked to be part of the, the focus group, I thought it was a great idea. I thought my voices would be heard. And just off of that, I knew that it was gonna be you know, a great experience. Kids would be able to go and experience it just as us teenagers and adults would. Based off what I've seen so far, I think my favorite space will be the watershed. I like the idea of all the, the animals and the fish, the otters, the, the real, how real it is. And you get to see it all up close and learn about it. My impression of the new Science Center is that it's very big. <laughs> you can see that kids will enjoy the exhibits and know more about themselves and science. The spaces, they're really, they're really everyone friendly. They have, they've got play, spaces for kids to know. They've got spaces for like teenagers. They've got spaces for adults. And so I was thinking, well, if there's spaces for everyone, everyone can learn. And that, I love that. I think the Science Center will make me more interested in science because I can see science in a whole different new way and I think other kids will enjoy that and love science way more. Having a new Science Center in my neighborhood would, you know, be more accessible. I'd be able to walk with my, uh, my younger sister and brother and bring them there. So I think going to the Science Center would help also me learn new things along with them. The Da Vinci Science Center began its mission to bring science to life and lives to science almost three decades ago. The Science Center has since evolved into an award-winning regional hub for STEAM education, offering innovative programs and exhibit experiences that spark curiosity and inspire a lifelong love of learning. 
we have welcomed more than 2 million visitors and encouraged thousands of students throughout the Lehigh Valley to think like Leonardo and see infinite possibilities that all stem from one question. What if? What if a child could step inside themselves and walk through the human body, placing their being at the center of da Vinci's Vitruvian human? How might that inspire the child to take better care of their own health and create a new model for improving the health of our community? What if finding oneself immersed in the natural world of the Lehigh River watershed, encountering animals that live at the base of a cascading waterfall or tucked inside limestone caves, sparked a lifelong pursuit of environmental problem solving? What if witnessing the manufacturing innovation taking place in the Lehigh Valley today influenced inventions that would shape industry and our lives tomorrow? What if taking part in hands-on experiments and exploring scientific principles through the arts ignited a generation of creators and innovators? The Da Vinci Science Center's What If began in 1992 with the desire to invite our community to explore and celebrate the wonders of science. Building on a long, successful history, our What If evolved to ask, what if the Science Center could increase its reach threefold and continue to build on Leonardo's legacy in ways yet to be imagined. The possibilities are endless, but the vision is clear. The new 21st century Da Vinci Science Center, located in the heart of downtown Allentown, will offer a state-of-the-art, reimagined, immersive visitor experience and exceptional hands-on educational programs with boundless reach. Join us as we enter the next phase of our evolution. Every time I see Celizandra and Gilbert speak, I get more excited myself. Plans are well underway for the development of the new Da Vinci Science Center in downtown Allentown. Here is a rendering of the front entrance on Hamilton Street. The building will be called the Da Vinci Science Center at the PPL Pavilion, named for our generous title building sponsor. And this is the rendering of the state-of-the-art Da Vinci STEAM Learning Center, which will engage students in STEAM educational programs designed to ignite imaginations, build skills, and open minds to the possibilities of a STEM career. We are designing a 21st century world-class science center. There will be an exhibit on the Lehigh River watershed, including an immersive Pocono ravine featuring North American river otters, a larger than life immersive human body exhibit that allows visitors to walk, climb, and crawl through the human body, a simulated factory floor experience that demonstrates how regional manufacturers combine science and artistic creativity to design and manufacture products, and a large traveling exhibit hall capable of hosting major blockbuster exhibits, and more. You can see more amazingly detailed renderings of the interiors, watch videos, and learn about the exhibits by visiting our website. Our groundbreaking is planned for next spring with an expected opening date of summer 2024 and we certainly invite all of you to be part of our journey. In closing, I would like to thank our board chair, Jim McLean, our MC, Megan Deller, and our keynote speaker, Captain Irving, for being a part of our 2021 Hall of Fame Excellence Awards. And once again, congratulate all the students and teachers for soaring to new heights, bringing science to life and lives to science, and inspiring us all to be curious and pursue our passions. A special thanks to Beale Fowler and Pena Creations for designing the beautiful Vitruvian Awards that all the honorees will receive. Good night, everyone. And don't forget to support us. Every dollar counts.